over the years, as the internet started to shape our behaviors, our characters, our beliefs, our moralities in many ways, uh, we're now about to hit the second wave of the internet on steroids, if you want, like, you know, artificial intelligence truly magnifying what humanity is. And, and when you talk about things like reinforcement learning, uh, that idea of asking employees of open AI to, to tell us what their views of things is, this is not reflective at all of the rest of the world. It, it, it lacks understanding of different cultures, different languages, different value systems, different traditions. And, you know, the joke I always give with all due respect to all opinions is that if you, you know, if an open AI employee says, uh, a man killed a woman in Pakistan, uh, you know, the typical reinforcement learning of California would be don't call them men and women. This is a gender uh, identity issue, right? And, and, and in reality, you know, and that's true. We are Californicating artificial intelligence. Now, that to me is probably one of the top societal, uh, dilemmas that the world is about to, to face. Uh, and I heard you once say something that I really took to heart, which is you, where, where you said AI is, I, I'm, I'm re paraphrasing here, but you, you basically said AI is not uh, our in innovation, it's our mirror. It's basically m reflecting to us what humanity is. What does that mean? Th that's right. So artificial intelligence is built on data that's collected about human beings. I think we all know the world is not always a fair place. The world is not always a safe place. I'll also add that the, quote, the internet is not the world. It's most not of the at all. no, most of the world is actually not reflect on the internet. You, and, and I appreciated your term, like the Californication of everything, because the internet is largely an English speaking Western place. So the values, the methods of communication, they're very Westernized, right? Even the the, the design decisions of saying most platforms are natively in English. Yeah. And no matter what part of the world you live in, you usually interact with social media Correct. platforms, search engines in English. Even if you are typing the anglicized letters, the phonetics of your language, right? Yeah. I, I'm, you know, my, my family is South Asian. We see this actually all over India, yeah. Pakistan, Bangladesh. The way they communicate and talk, even over text, is they will type the phonetics of the word in Bengali, but in English characters. All these things matter, right? And they matter because all of that perspective, all of that way of doing things is put into these AI systems. So there's a couple of problems here. The first is that, as I mentioned, and as you've pointed out, the internet is not reflective of the world mm -hmm. in its entirety, in its beauty, in its diversity, right? It's reflective of English-speaking Western perspectives, by and large. The second is that this data was not ever natively meant to build artificial intelligence. When when you went on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter, did you think, oh, one day this is going to train an AI model? <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. That is going to be magnified right. that, and, that's uh, be and magnified. rule the world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, so this data was never intended for that purpose. So that's second. And, and third is, you know, just the abstraction from individual situations, interactions, scenarios that are sometimes historically old and outdated to try to mash all of that together without context, without temporality, temporality, without understanding how the world itself has changed, just sort of flattens the diversity, right? The, the complexity of what it means to be human. So we're never going to have these, these AI models are parrots, right? They're mirrors. They're just reflecting the things that they're being fed without, without any context. So it makes it worse. Oh, yes. That's actually really interesting. So, so you would take, I, 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 I asked Chad GPT recently what my wife's name is. Mm -hmm. And it answered with so much confidence, the wrong name. It's quite interesting. Actually. What 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 uh, most models do when you ask it about me? It it generates a biography that is actually an amalgamation of multiple women in my field. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there, are, you know, there are a few prominent women in in AI ethics, responsible use, who have worked at companies like right, Google and Twitter and Microsoft, etc. So the biography that it writes about me is actually I I know I know how they've pieced together other people's bios to do yeah. this. So it'll say something like that I'm a professor at the University of Washington, that's not me, that's Emily Bender. That I worked at Google, that's not me, that was Meg Mitchell and Timney Gabru. Um and just like, you know, it, it pieces together the wrong story. And and it doesn't apologize. No, it, I mean it, it, it's, it doesn't say I I th I I'm not sure. I think it could be. 
So it, I, I'm glad you raised that. So um, what I work, what I do with my nonprofit is I do these uh, exercises called red teaming. And the purpose of red teaming traditionally has been to bring hackers to break into systems. I'm expanding the idea to say, when we're breaking a system here, it's not just about hackers causing malicious content. It could be exactly what you're talking about, an incorrect representation of a person, of a society, of a culture. So we did a red teaming exercise with scientists to look at COVID and climate mis and disinformation with language models. And I love these exercises because you see the technology through somebody else's eyes. Mm. Like even if I am a quote outsider in tech, I'm very much of tech, right? Yeah. So I don't see things the way a scientist does. So what they told me was exactly what you said. What they said was, well, the fundamental problem with language models is that they speak uh, very truthfully, right? So they speak yeah. as if what they say is the truth when most of science is about inquiry, conversation, and discovery. Mm. So if you talk to scientists, they never say, well, that's the answer. Yeah. They'll always say, well, the research has this, and then there's this other research, and because they, science is understood as a language. Yeah. Language models don't impart science like that. They'll like try to say it like a fact. And it was interesting that scientists pointed out the same thing that you just said. There is, there is such an arrogance to it, to be quite honest. I mean, when I worked at Google, one of the things we took pride on in organizing the world's information, and I, I was the one of the first people when I came into Google that tried to object and change that. And I was taught by Google that, you know, for example, uh, I remember there was a, uh, a video on YouTube uh, that said that Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish nation, uh, is gay, right? And I basically said, but, you know, Turks believe otherwise. Like, why are we showing this to Turkish people? And couldn't we just IP block it from Turkey and, uh, and uh, you know, and basically just avoid a conflict and, and uh, um, you know, people being upset about it? And Google's view was, what gives you the right to, th to say what's true and what's not? 